OK, I'm going to uh, take you through AC 2.1. At the same time, I'm going to combine it with AC 3.2. And we're looking here at um, biological theories of crime, and in particular, a subsection of that, which are physiological theories. And we're going to look specifically at the work of Cesare Lombroso. So let's start with a basic description of what we mean by a biological theory. So a biological theory of criminality is saying that criminals are in some way biologically different from non-criminals. And because of this biological difference, that is the cause of their criminality. Now, we're going to look at a number of different biological explanations of criminality. But in this one, we're looking at a physiological theory, the one of that of Cesare Lombroso. And a physiological theory they claim that the physical features of criminals differ from those of non-criminals. So the idea that the way you look makes you a criminal. It's those features that lead to your criminality. So without further ado, let's look at Lombroso in a little bit more detail. So he was um, lived between 1835 and 1909. He's known as the father of modern criminology. There's a picture of him, that's what he looked like. He was an Italian psychiatrist, a military doctor, and he pioneered the use of scientific methods in criminology. So as we go through this theory, what you're probably gonna find is that you disagree with it horrendously, but actually the value of this theory is in that he was the first to actually apply science to criminology. And that then led to other criminologists coming in after him and uh, putting together some perhaps more accepted biological theories of criminology. So let's look at some of these key ideas of Lombroso. Lombroso believed that criminality was inherited. So you were born criminal. There was nothing you could do about it. And controversially, what he said was that offenders, they're basically throwbacks to some earlier phase of human history. They're sort of semi-human, sub-humans. They're not fully developed humans. And I'll go into this in a little bit more detail in a minute. And that we could identify these subhumans, for want of a better word, by their physical attributes, by what they looked like. And he referred to these features, these physical attributes, as atavistic features. Now, you cannot answer a question on Lombroso in the exam without using the word atavistic or atavism, which is the belief in these physical attributes. So atavistic, atavism, you must know those words. So his theory came about, uh, this idea that you're born criminal, from his study and the data he collected from, um, from lots of different criminals, uh, um, both living and dead. So what he did is he collected data, he made scrupulous measurements of facial features from 383 post-mortems of criminals and uh, 3,839 uh, criminals who were still alive. So quite a large data set, over 4,000 faces that he looked at and meticulously logged. And uh, these are sort of various pictures that he made, all photographs he made of these criminals. And his conclusion was that 40% of criminal acts can be accounted for by atavistic characteristic, these facial features, for want of a better word. And as I said, atavistic really means related to something ancient, ancestral, something in earlier history. So for want of a, an idea, this uh, famous uh, picture, the uh, Ascent of Man, uh, here's Homo sapiens. And what um, Lombroso is saying is that criminals are more down this end. And you would expect to see these more ape-like features on criminals because they are a, a lower order of humanity. So he argues that criminals are physically different from non-criminals. And he relates certain physical characteristics to sociopathic and criminal behaviour. So really, he's viewing the criminals as separate species, uh, a species, as, as I put in that picture, that's somewhere between modern and primitive humans. And these 
atavistic primitive features um, are what those who commit crimes have because they are throwbacks to an earlier stage of human development and the the fact that you're a throwback you, that you have these features manifests itself in the tendency to commit crimes so he thought you were born criminal he thought that criminality was inherited and so therefore you have no control over that behavior and he argued that a born criminal can be determined by the physical shape of the head and face so from all those over 4,000 studies that he made he looked at the forms and dimensions of the skull of the jaw size and identified what he thought were the criminal physical feature and he thought that criminals were pre-social they were unable to control their impulses they had a reduced sense of pain and one of the things he believed was that's why criminals tended to have lots of tattoos because they didn't feel pain when they were being tattooed so let's look at these atavistic features in a little bit more detail so what he meant by this and i remember going back to that sort of sub form of humanity uh, a low sloping forehead having large ears asymmetry of the face a protruding jawline long arms asymmetry of the cranium a large chin a flattened or an upturned nose high cheekbones all these are features of atavism and Lombroso concluded that males needed five or more of these features uh, in order for them to be prone to criminality whereas for females he thought they only needed three to be considered to be in the danger zone for the born criminal now that is um, worth thinking about because quite often candidates do not mention this bit in the theory so five of these for males three for women and that Lombroso believe made made you this atavistic um, criminal so according to Lombroso you could go even further and tell what crime a person would commit by the way they looked now again for the exam it's worth having some examples of this so he thought that a thief could be identified by having a small expressive face and wandering eyes whereas murderers had cold glassy stares and bloodshot eyes and hawk-like noses that tended to be large whereas sex offenders had thick lips and protruding ears so have some examples of those to help you and in addition to those physical traits Lombroso also suggested that there were other aspects of the born criminal which included things like less sensibility to pain and touch hence the tattooing a more acute sight a lack of moral sense including an absence of remorse they were more vain they were more impulsive they were vindictive they were cruel and as I said they had a special as well as tattooing excessive tattooing they also used special criminal language so all of these were other characteristics of the criminal so Lombroso also did identify two other types of criminal that he saw as biologically different and he called those insane criminals and epileptic criminals but for the purposes really of where we're going with this um, a level stick to um, those types of criminality I've given you there now that was his theory one of the things you will definitely have to do in the exam is evaluate the strengths and weaknesses and so if you get an evaluation question and lots of my students do this and it winds me up no end if you see the phrase evaluate the examiner does not want a description of the theory it just wants strengths and weaknesses likewise if we see a described question about the theory we just want to know about the theory and not the strengths and weaknesses so remember that as, as, as you go through the course evaluation is strengths and weaknesses so let's give you some strengths and weaknesses for Lombroso's theory so the strengths are well that he was the first person to study crime scientifically he used objective measurements to gather evidence and previously before Lombroso crime was just seen as a, a moral or religious issue so that is a strength of his theory 
and his research showed the importance of examining clinical and historical records of criminals, which we still do today. His later work took some limited account of social and environmental factors, not just heredity, so he did tweak it a bit. And by arguing that offenders are not really free to choose to commit crime, he helped us to focus on how we might then prevent offending rather than just simply punishing. And he also challenged the idea that criminals are evil or that they choose to be criminal. So, um, oh, and, and perhaps the, the, the best one that you can use is the fact that he labelled prisons criminal universities and suggested criminals came out much worse than when they went in. Now, if we take uh, today's recidivism rates, actually Lombroso was extremely perceptive there. And of course, one could argue that his work heralded the beginnings of offender profiling. So those are the strengths. The weaknesses obviously far outweigh the strengths and uh, the main weakness is that his research lacked a control group. So his research technically is completely invalid. So therefore carries little weight scientifically. Uh, all research, or virtually all research since Lombroso has failed to show any link whatsoever between facial features and criminality. So basically his idea was pants. And also, and I think this is a strong argument, by describing criminals as being like primitive savages, what Lord Brosa was actually doing was equating non-Western societies with criminals. And that is definitely a form of racism. And of course, the other important thing to consider is that not everyone with atavistic features is a criminal and not all criminals have atavistic features. So something to ponder there. And then um, later on, uh, Charles Goring used a non-criminal control group and found no significant differences in terms of behaviour. So he did the experiment with a control group, no difference whatsoever. Um, and of course, like all theories of this sort, Lombroso's theories are very deterministic and it seems that you know, you're born criminal, you can't escape your destiny, there's nothing you can do about it whatsoever. And then um, obviously, this physiological theory completely ignores all the effects of upbringing, uh, of environment, families, which can, you know, you could argue that criminality is uh, learned from parents. It's not an inherited factor. So other things to consider there. So just to sum it all up, whilst the theory is not taken seriously in today's society, Lombroso importance is the fact that he was the first person to give criminology scientific credibility. So he moved thinking away from the view that crime was just moral and religious issue and he then paved the way for other researchers who then put forward more scientifically accepted biological theories of criminality and we will look at those in future presentations. I hope you found that useful. Goodbye.